found a couple of these props at the Halloween store this year. I've got this rat here, and I've got this little skull here in the back. And I thought it would be neat to add some glowing eyes to them. Now, they don't have to be eyes. In this case, I've got red eyes, but they could also be glowing of different colored LEDs uh, throughout the body, or it could even just be for a nice little interesting decoration. But what I was really looking for was a simple circuit that could run off of a couple of AA batteries or an 18650 rechargeable for many, many weeks on end. But the circuit also had to be something pretty simple. So I played around with it for a while till I finally came up with a circuit that I think works really, really well. You can see it slowly fades in, stays on for a brief uh, second or two, and then fades back out again. And because we're using the 555 timer, you can actually adjust how long that cycle takes throughout. And then we can also adjust some of the other capacitors and resistors to adjust the timing to be exactly what you might want for your particular prop. So let's go ahead and take a look at this circuit and we'll talk about how it goes together. So I've got this broken into four different components, but you don't necessarily need to build all four components. The first component in the top left hand corner here is just the power. And this is coming in and I've designed it this way so that I can have a printed circuit board made where I can use a mini or a micro USB as well as a screw terminal coming in. So this is something that allows me a lot of flexibility. And also if we wanted to put this into a kit, we could very easily swap back and forth on what we want to use. The second one here is a little circuit designed around an LDR, a light dependent resistor. So if we wanted it to turn on and off or turn it on at dusk and then off during the day, we could design that up as well. This particular part of the circuit might need a little bit of work. Right now it works pretty well on the lab desk, but as soon as I put it out in the other room where the light isn't quite right, my resistor values aren't quite up to what they need to be. So this could use a little bit of work, uh, but nonetheless, it's a good starting point if you wanted to develop one. In the lower left-hand corner, this is our 555 timer circuit. And this is gonna be what controls the actual cycle throughout. And this is gonna be roughly a 50% duty cycle. And it's gonna stretch about three or four seconds long. Those are all adjustable based on the resistors that you use, as well as the capacitor that you use over here. And this one here on the far lower right hand corner, this is the circuit that's going to control the fade in and the fade out of the LED. So this is going to be taking the 555 timer output and it's going to charge up a capacitor and then slowly fade the lights on and then it's going to hit an equilibrium and then it's going to fade them back out again uh, when this switches back to a sink. So we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. But those are the four components that I built up on this particular circuit. All right, let's take a quick look at the two main components, which is gonna be our 555 circuit and then our actual fade in, fade out circuit. So the 555 circuit is just a standard 555. I've got, I'm using an NE555. Now, if you were really concerned about power, you could switch that over to a CMOS one and it'll be a little bit more efficient, but these are honestly so cheap. And this isn't a circuit that would be run 24 seven anyway, so it's not a big deal. Here I'm just using a 400 or 47K resistor and a 100K resistor. And then over here I'm using a 100 microfarad capacitor. And that'll give us a you know, roughly three second uh, cycle and then about a 50% duty cycle on that. And the reason the 50% duty cycle is important is we wanna be able to have a high and a low for about the same amount of time so that our lights will fade in and out about evenly. Uh, and if we don't have them set up quite that way, you'll have either a faster fade in and then a fade out, or it might just be a little bit different. But you can go ahead and adjust those however you would like. Now, I did forget to print this one trace on here going from six to two. I just drew it in by hand. I'll get that fixed on the final design documents. Now, right here on the left on number pin three is my virtual out, or is my out, and I've got that labeled as the 555 out. So that's gonna then pick us up over here on the second half of our circuit. And this is gonna be that 555 in, or 555 out here, which is gonna be the in to this part of the circuit. Now this part of the circuit is gonna control that fade in and out. And it's gonna be a little bit of a slow fade up. We've got a 100K capacitor resistor here, and we've got a 1200 microfarad capacitor here. So when the 555 turns on and this goes high, 
What this is going to do is this is going to slowly charge up this capacitor and it's going to start to turn this transistor on. Now the reason we have a transistor in here is because we don't know necessarily how many LEDs that we want to be able to run. And by using a transistor, as long as our input current will be sufficient, we could run many different LEDs on this. And so as this turns on, this capacitor starts to charge up and it's going to turn on the transistor. The lights are going to start to glow and it's going to have a nice little slow ramp up and then it's going to hit a peak eventually where this is going to be charged all the way up to our battery voltage and then it will stay at that peak until this turns off again. And because we're using a 50% duty cycle, those should be about the same amount. When this turns off, this is now going to start to sink current instead of source current, and that's going to start to drain our capacitor, and then this is going to slowly drain the, bring our LEDs back down. So we get that nice little ramp up, pause, and then ramp back down again, and then the whole thing cycles again. Now in this particular case, I'm going to be using a little kind of screw terminal here so that I can... Uh, turn, take my LEDs out uh, or take the circuit board out and if I just need to change things uh, very easily rather than soldering it directly to the board. So anyway, those are the two main components of this particular circuit. The reason these are labeled as virtual ground is because if we're going to use the, the other component with the LDR, we're going to be able to use that LDR in order to turn the ground on and off of the circuit. So anyway, we're probably not going to cover that here today, but if you want to go ahead and just follow the instructions, it'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and take a look at the breadboard of how the final circuit looks. Here's our breadboard version. As I mentioned, it's a very simple 555 circuit. On the left side, nothing fancy. I've got those resistors and that diode as well as the little tiny small cap there on the top. And then on the bottom, I've got the charge capacitor here, which is 100 microfarad, which is controlling our timing. And then this blue wire is our out off pin three, and that's going over to the right side of the circuit. And over here on the right side, I've got that resistor going to our capacitor. And then this is our other resistor here going over to our transistor hiding in the back back here. And then this transistor is being driven out to these two LEDs, uh, which are uh, sourcing current from our five volts and then running that back through through our transistor. And right now you can see I just have two uh, LEDs plugged in. We can actually have as many as we want. We're not limited to the amount of current that the 555 can produce because we're using this transistor. This just allows us to have something if we wanted to have 10 LEDs or 20 LEDs or 50 LEDs, we, we can. We just have to make sure that our input current can support them. So that's what the breadboard version looks like. Now let's go ahead and switch over and take a look at a little PCB that I made up using a piece of perf board. Here's a little soldered up perf board using that same circuit, just makes it a lot more permanent. On the far, far left here, I've got the LDR circuit with the variable resistor. I have a switch in order to use the LDR versus just uh, go straight off of the battery, the transistor. And then right here in the middle is the kind of the, the fade in, fade out circuitry with the uh, big capacitor here, as well as the transistor. Now these capacitors, these large ones, are ones that I pulled out of uh, another project. So that's why they've got these other legs soldered on them. Um, just kind of reusing some old capacitors that I had. And then underneath that is that 555 timer and its capacitor resistors and um, a capacitor over here on the far, far left, as well as the diode. On the far right is my input for the battery. Now, in this particular case, I just have a screw terminal and I've got a connection here up to an 18650 cell. And then in the middle goes out to my two LEDs in my rat. And these are just soldered here. The LEDs are actually in parallel, <clears throat> but I've got them kind of coming in here with shared uh, at the terminal level. And then this is my LDR, which I have soldered onto just a large piece of wire right there on the far, far left. So that's what the PCB looks like. Let me flip it over and you can see the mesh of wires on the back. I just kind of put this together quickly, so I didn't do a lot of uh, thought on the design, so I ended up just running wires kind of all over the place, but it was just a prototype to see if it's gonna work. I'll eventually get some PCBs printed. So there's the prototype board, battery, and rat. So with the LED wires, what I've done is I've actually soldered the resistors in line. So as I mentioned, these are coming, these are now joined together, but the LEDs themselves are actually in parallel. So I've got them split right here. Now you're gonna wanna put 
some type of way of connector, whether it's a, a joint connector or in my case, a screw terminal. So you can take these, uh, so you can very easily remove them from the board. Now that means you can reuse your boards if you had multiple um, kind of props that you want to put LEDs in, uh, but also just working with it, it's so much easier to be able to disconnect things and troubleshoot things when you're running into problems. So I would highly recommend putting some connectors on. Now in this case, this was hollow. It had a piece of foam on the bottom that I pulled out. And in order to run LEDs through a long wire like this, through a little small tight head, your best bet is to put the LED in from the outside. And so as you can see, I've got a bunch of hot glue holding it in place, which isn't a big deal. You can't really see it, especially if it's a little bit dark out. And this is meant to be outside as part of a prop anyway, so it's not a big deal. So um, one trick you can do on things like this plastic, in order to get a really good hole, you can take a hot soldering iron and use that in order to, to melt a hole for the LED. It just creates a real clean hole that you can then stick the LED in. And then fish the wires in, solder the wires onto the back of the LED, fish them in, fish them out the bottom. And then in my case, I put the resistors in here and then put some crimps on the end for my screw terminal. And then this is my LDR, which could, could be mounted either through the, the rat, through the top, through another hole, or could just be kept separate entirely if you wanted to use that. So anyway, that's kind of the final version. You can kind of see it's flashing, it's uh, eye is glowing and everything. So let's go ahead and grab the multimeter and see what kind of current draw this is. And we'll do some quick calculations to see how long it's gonna run. I have my multimeter set up, it's in current mode and I've got it in line with my battery on the negative terminal. My battery is an 18650 cell that I pulled from an old laptop. I do have a little connector on it here so I can go ahead and recharge that when it becomes dead. Over here I've got the rat whose eyes are blinking. The LDR is currently inside the rat so it thinks it's nighttime. So it's go ahead it's running right now kind of in, in full mode, full blink mode. And then we've got our little circuit here at the bottom. So if we go ahead and take a look at the multimeter, you can see it's reading on the low, low, low end about one um, milliamp maybe one and a half milliamps. Yeah, let's say one and a half milliamps. And then on the high end, it's peaking out at around seven and a half or so. And so, or seven. So if we pick something in the middle, let's just say three and a half to be super, super conservative. So this is running at about three and a half milliamps. So if we go ahead and pull up our battery calculator, which I've already done the, the check on here, if we say this is a 2000, uh, amp hour, or let me see, a two amp hour, 2000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty close to what this 18650 is. If we run that at 3.5 milliamps, uh, don't worry about the runtime because it's going to be running 20 or constantly. It doesn't have a, a cycle on it. Uh, this calculates to be roughly 23, 24 days of runtime, which is pretty good. So that would be 24 7. So if we were to set this up and put this outside at around Halloween time or maybe even Christmas time, it would run for, you know, give or take uh, about 24, 25 days constantly off of one single battery. And then you could either charge, change the battery or go ahead and recharge the battery. So anyway, so that's the project. Uh, I plan on getting some PCBs printed up and make it look a little bit nicer. It'll make the wiring a lot easier. And I might build a number of these to put them in different objects like the skull as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. If so, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.